Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. You know what? I was wrong. Wasn't the first time, it certainly won't be the last. It's good to be back. I took a couple days and went uh, camping up in Cottonwood with some friends and uh, smacked into the bar on my uh, awning, you know, just walking. And anyway, um, I thought there'd be a thousand listings that would expire on November 1st, and there was only 789. Now, that's a high number, uh, but it's high because we're getting into the holiday season and people saying, well, I tried to sell it, you know, through October. It didn't work, so let's just take it off. We'll probably give it another run in January. But I was also looking at numbers saying, you know, with, with canceled listings being as high as they are, it would make sense that, that as listings get closer to the holidays and they haven't sold, that the number of expired listings will probably be far greater than what we normally see. We normally see between three and 500. So 789, it, it is a pretty good clip. So there is some of that out there where when the listing agreement had the expiration date, the homeowner said, I don't want to extend it. Let's just leave it because uh, we're getting in November and December and it always slows down then. And here's our listings. Now these are active listings. So you can see that they've come up and they've, they've plateaued. And you can look at all the other charts, all the other years, and they do come down November, December. There's no avoiding that. We're going to have lower and lower listings. What is kind of surprising, a uh, number of price changes have come down a little bit to 3600 from a high of 4400 This is just a natural occurrence as all these price changes that you saw here early on was when things were really starting to turn. And it was surprising a lot of sellers that... They weren't getting movement. So that's coming down, but it's not coming down a lot. It's down like 3600 there. Um, but list pricing is not moving much. That's kind of a surprise given the market that we're in. And sales are just incredibly low. They're sitting around, you know, 2200 over a seven-day period. New listings went up about 100 units the past week. Not much. Uh, that's kind of surprising as well, but that's going to start ticking down. Active listings are probably going to go down one to 200 a week between now and the first of the year. And I say that just based on historical numbers on what we always, always tend to see. And uh, so as we track that, it, what am I trying to say? It, the holidays just skew things. So we're not really going to see any trends. We're not going to see anything that comes out and jumps at us. Um, that says, oh, wow, this is really changing. Even though today the Fed's probably going to announce the, a 0.75 um, increase again. I'm looking at my other monitor because I'm going to pull something else something up for you here in a second. Um, but that's already kind of baked in the cake. Now, when they did that last time, when they raised the rates, the day that they raised the rates, nothing happened to mortgages. And then the next day, they just had a complete meltdown. The mortgages flew through the roof. So... Will it repeat itself again this time? I don't know. It's going to be something interesting to watch. But I also discovered something new on Redfin that some of you might find interesting. And On their tab up here, they have rental resources. Now, it's a new tab. Uh, list my home for rent. Rental market trends. Should I rent or buy in a renter guide? So you look at rental market trends, and they have a rental market tracker here. It says rents are going half as fast as they were six months ago. Well, that's not really cheery news, but at least it's, uh, you know, they're not screaming up like they used to. But that's an interesting tab to go to on redfin.com if you want to explore your rental market. Or if you're a, um, a landlord where you want to list your home, you just have another avenue here to get some exposure. For sellers out there going into November and December, uh, the day after Thanksgiving is a fantastic day for open houses. Open house traffic's off the roof, uh, especially for you agents looking to do an open house. Uh, they send mom to the mall, you know, <laughs> Black Friday shopping, which isn't the chaotic event that it used to be, by the way. And uh, and then they just go out and kind of start looking at open houses. You've got people from out of town. Yeah, I'm thinking I might want to move to Arizona. Let's go out and look at some houses. So it's a great day. Closer you get to Christmas, the slower buyer traffic gets. Agents, don't be rude. Don't book an appointment on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. But between Christmas Day and New Year's Day, um, keep your house on the market. Don't pull it for the holidays because the buyers that are out there then, they're out there because they have to be. They're serious. They're probably moving in January and they, you know, they're, 
They got Christmas week off from work. Let's go ahead and see what's out there. Not as much traffic, but the ones that are out there are seriously waiting to pull the trigger. I mean, I sold a house once. I listed it on Christmas Eve. I got a contract on New Year's Eve. We had pretty good foot traffic that week, so I was pleasantly surprised. So don't be afraid of that. And if the other statistic that I've seen is on my seven-day moving average, I'm saying that we have 2,200 homes go under contract every week, and we have about 3,300 new listings come on. The difference between that is that actually 67% of those are going under contract. That's a respectable number. Now, if we go back a year ago, 104% of new listings were going under contract. That's why prices were going bonkers. But 67% is not a bad number. It's just that all the activity has gone way down. So the market is slow, but the percentage of homes going under contract is not dire. That's why when you look at that list pricing, it's not falling in a straight line down. So there's enough activity to keep prices kind of where they're at. And everybody is in a frozen holding pattern right now. January is going to be an interesting one to watch. I don't believe the elections coming up are going to make one iota of a difference. It never does in real estate. Elections don't change the already established direction. If home prices are going up, you have an election, they're still going up. If they're going down, they're still going to go down. You won't wake up Wednesday morning and see a drastic change in how real estate's going on. So that's not going to happen. What you're going to see, lower demand, lower sales because of the holidays. So we'll keep track of that here and see what's going on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button.